It's just a few minutes before 3 o'clock. This is KTBR Kalispell. The reason we celebrate Good Friday is because it was at 3 p.m. 2,000 years ago that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And now from Fresh Life Church, Pastor Levi Lusco. Hey, thank you so much, Benny. Uh, It's an honor to get asked to be on the radio to talk about the significance of this day, Good Friday. You know, you might be just going through the motions at work or whatever's going on. This is the day in the calendar that we set aside to remember that Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago died on the cross. The Bible says that he was taken to a place called Golgotha, which is uh, Calvary in Latin. It just means the place of a skull. And it was an execution site outside the city of Jerusalem where criminals and convicts in the Roman Empire were dragged and they were crucified. And crucifixion is the most painful form of capital punishment ever devised by man. In our day, they kill people by electric chair, or modern lethal injection. The goal is to minimize pain and to make it as quick and humane as possible. In that day, it was just the opposite. It was meant to be as barbaric and as horrifying as it could be and to make it last as long as they could. So crucifixions could last several days at times. They would be hanging by nails. They would be driven through the wrists and the feet uh, up in the air where they would be exposed to the elements. They would often be stripped naked and they would be mocked and ridiculed as they died. And this is the way that Jesus died on the cross. We think about this beautiful thing, the cross. It's a piece of art, but really it was a torture device. And as he hung there, he would be suffocating, struggling to breathe. And this could go on, like I said, for days. But Jesus Christ died after only six hours hanging there on the cross and as he hung he was going through the most brutal pain you could imagine searing pain as he had to struggle up and down the cross to get a breath of air and his back had been whipped already so the rough wood would have scraped it even more miserably raw and painful as he did he spoke Uh, he spoke first from the cross saying father forgive them for they know not what they do Uh, amazingly asking for the forgiveness and salvation of those very people who had just put him there Uh, He also spoke from the cross, asking for John, his apostle, to take care of Mary, his mother. Behold your mother, he said, and mother, behold your son. He spoke as well when the thief on the cross beside him, a man who had been guilty of charges that deserved death, uh, cried out to him and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, "I, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise, which is an amazing thing because it tells us that even if we just, even in our final moments, call upon Christ, we can be saved. That man didn't have time to get baptized. He didn't have time to go to church and didn't have time to take communion. All he did was believe in Jesus. And and Jesus told him, you're going to be in heaven when you die. And that man would not be long on this earth. So he would be in paradise shortly. Jesus also spoke saying, I'm thirsty, fulfilling prophecy that when he came to the earth, he would take on our body and be subject to our needs, human needs like hunger and, and thirst. After suffering for so long, the Bible says all of the sins of the world were placed upon him. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And a great darkness covered the land at at high noon when the sun should have been at its brightest. Uh, Jesus hung there, the Bible says, as a substitute for us. He was willing to take upon his account, take upon his bill, every wrong thing we've ever done. And God personally treated Jesus like we deserve to be treated so that he could treat us like Jesus deserved to be treated. And Jesus, having, having paid for all of our sins, he, he cried out, it is finished. It is finished. Paid in full. It was an accounting term that would be said when a bill had been fully satisfied for Christ had satisfied the righteous requirement of the law and received all of God's wrath heaped upon him. And then he told his father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And at 3 p.m. on that Friday day, Jesus Christ breathed his last and gave up his ghost dying on the cross for the sins of the world. It's now 3 o'clock. To be sure that he was dead, which was required for the Roman centurions, or they would have been killed in his place. They took a spear and drove it through his ribcage and into his heart, and a mixture of blood and water flowed forth, and this showed that he was truly dead. And having died as he did, the centurion watched this all happen and saw what had gone on. The man who killed Jesus cried out, Truly this was a righteous man. Indeed, he was the Son of God, believing in him, answering the prayer that Jesus had prayed for those who had crucified him. One of his executioners put his faith in Christ at the moment he died. And this, of course, is what we remember on this day. Not just these events and the 
R-rated nature of the atrocity of the Son of God being crucified, but the purpose behind it, so that when we come to our day of death, whether it's in a traffic accident or a heart attack or cancer slowly in some hospital ward, we could have peace and hope, because one thing that's inevitable is that we must all face the valley of the shadow of death. And because Jesus died, we can live forever. Join Pastor Levi Lusco of the Fresh Life Church for Easter Sunday services at Majestic Valley Arena beginning at 10 a.m. this Sunday. For more information on tonight's Thousand Foot Crutch concert at Majestic, which is absolutely free, or our Easter Sunday services or any Fresh Life services, go to freshlifechurch.com. On behalf of all of us at B Broadcasting, have a Christ-filled Easter, and God bless you.